Genesis 1, 26. Thank you, God. Have your way today. Help me, God, to be sensitive to you. Every, every thought. And I ask you, God, that you would bring us those spiritual antennas. Lord, that we would be ready to hear through being ready to obey. Praise God. Praise God. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Let me just stop there. In God saying, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, he's talking about different aspects of God and as well of man. When you speak of the image of God, what he's talking about is man in, in God's image is man who God's life has dominion within that man. And through the God's life having dominion in that man, the very image and character of God is presented through that man. So that is man in the image of God. Now, man in the likeness of God is the faculties in man through which that image will be established and presented. What I'm saying there is that God's likeness and God is who He is and the character of God is established by God's intellect, His emotion, that creates His will. So man is created in the likeness of God, being made up of intellect, emotion, and will. Now, it is through intellect, emotion, and will that God will establish image. It is through your intellect, your emotion, and your will that God sets forth to establish and present His image. Because the fact that you and I, within ourselves, are so limited, it would be absolutely impossible, and is absolutely impossible, for us to present the image of God. Man's limits cannot present the image of God. Therefore, God spoke to us in, in Romans 8 and 28. says that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. This says that God, to those who love God, are the call according to His purpose, and His purpose is... That you would be conformed to His image. That's exactly what God's purpose has been all along. Now, God created you, mankind in fact, for the purpose of conforming you to His image. That He would be presented that the world could know God through man. Everything God creates, He has to create it first with a capacity for what He intends to do with it. In, in, in that, we looked at Genesis 1, backing right back up to Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters... God said, let there be light, and there was light. So God's intent in the creation of that world, this world, was that it would contain light. So the first thing that God has to do is He moves and creates a void that is capable of containing light. Then once that capability is there, God said, let there be light, and it did that which it's created to do. So God had to first create a capacity. The same is true in everything in creation. God created everything in creation 
giving it a capacity to do what he intended it to do. And it can only do what God intended as it is that capacity is filled with that which God intended for it. Do you understand what I'm saying? God had to create, God said, I intend for the birds to do this. So he created that capacity in the bird. But the bird cannot sing, cannot fly, cannot do until God himself fills that void, that capacity with God. The reason the birds sang this morning is that they're filled with God doing what he intended the birds to do. The reason that trees grow today is because God gave them the capacity to do His intent and then filled that capacity with a God that does it. Everything in creation is the same. In, 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 in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, in, in the... God said 38 and 39, He said, I created all of this with its own body, with its own life. The, the flowers and, and the animals, everything has its own life and own responsibility to God, its own capacity. And when God filled that capacity, it did what God intended. And it could no more do what God intended than, than, than uh, you and I can do what God intends until we allow God to fill the void that He created for the capacity of His intent. Doesn't that make you happy? I mean, it should make us happy to know, you know what? God's got the plan. And God's got the means of it working. I mean, I'm just a success story waiting on God. Well, hallelujah. How do you like my slow down format? Working? I pause more with more of those meaningful pauses. Now, man is created by God. To have the greatest capacity in all of creation for God. That's the distinction and we understand that. The greatest capacity for God is defined in one way. It is by that void being filled, enabling man... To bear the very image of God Himself. Nothing else in creation was created with that capacity. To bear the very image of God Himself. That's why God has given dominion over everything else in God's plan. So in God giving man this greatest capacity to bear the image, we're told in 2 Corinthians I'm going to read it to you. you. You go there if you'd like. 2 Corinthians 3. Eighteen. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry... As we have received mercy, we faint not. He said that this is God's purpose. This is God working to bring us to that. And he said, and this is your ministry. And this will take place as that void is filled with God. More and more, it will begin to radiate the presence and the power of God. As the very glory of God is presented from you. Because that's what God created to happen. That was his purpose. Now, within this created void, everything, as, as the sister testimony testified this morning, everything is, is in there. It's coded in there. God said, I'm, I'm going to put 
put a void in you that, that I have an intent to fill. And here's what that will produce. Everything's coded in there. Every intent of God. And what it is, is it contains within that created void is your preordained calling from God. Within that created void, you'll find holy ground where you'll meet God and God will speak to you on your life and your purpose. Within that created void is where you will meet God. Now understanding that man is given by God the greatest capacity for himself. And at the same time, God gives you this great capacity, but within yourself, you have absolutely no ability to know God. The greatest capacity to know God, but within yourself, no ability to know God. Jesus, speaking in, in, in Luke 10, 22 in Luke 10, 22, Jesus speaking, saying, says these words. All things are delivered to me of my Father. No man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son. And he to whom the Son will reveal him. See, you're given this great capacity to bring forth the image of God, but you have no ability to know God. That has to come from God. Again, what God's saying to you is relax. Relax. Everything's taken care of. Within yourself, you have no ability of yourself. But of God, you have all ability. So, it is through the likeness of God that God will approach you. It is through that created intellect, emotion, and will that God will make himself known. In John 6, 44, he said, No man can come to me unless my Father draws him. So God is going to draw you and to make himself known to you through the likeness that he put in you for that purpose. Your intellect and your emotions are for the purpose of God making himself known. He will do this by divine revelation in those faculties. We think... If we're not careful, we'll think that, that, that no, God doesn't work that way. And one of the things that God spoke to me is we're trying to get God to commandeer our, emo our, our intellect and emotions. And God is saying, no, I'm just trying to get you to surrender them. Because it's through them I will make myself known to you. We, mess up, we get messed up because... Uh, we, we go around, we look for somebody to prophesy something on my life. We go around and we look for somebody to give me a word from God. We, we, we go around and, you know, we get messed up because we're saying, well, I, I, I'm hearing audible voices. I'm not saying that there is not a truth that somebody can prophesy. I'm not saying that somebody can't give you a word from God. And I'm not saying for sure that God can't speak to you audibly. But I'm going to tell you that 99.9999% that of what God's going to do is He's going to speak to you through the Word of God. In your intellect... And in your emotion. This is how God is going to. Come to you. He's going to first of all. By divine revelation. Through these, through these faculties. He will draw you. He will also. Through those same faculties. Establish himself. Manifest himself. And express himself. In the image of God. All along using those faculties. 
for his purposes. What we're looking at is, is the man's intellect, man's emotion, work together to establish man's will. And I'm talking about now, this is you, not God involved at all. God, you, your, your intellect and emotion will establish your will. That's exactly how it will work. Now what God's purpose is, is to come through your intellect and your emotion. And so affect you to cause you to will His will. And that's how we are submitted to God, no other way. Doesn't make any difference what we say. Doesn't make any difference what piece of paper we sign. The reason we are saved is because that God's, God's uh, came and through our intellect and through our emotion, we decided to submit our will to God's will. It can only be done by God. Only through Jesus Christ. Now, It is God's intent. In fact, that's why it was created. We've got a, a intellect and emotions that establish our will. And those were created by God, for God, for the purpose of our giving our will to God. And it is for this that the church must repent. Because we've taken that which belongs to God and used it to, to establish and to claim our own will. And it does not present God, it presents me. Oh, how religious it is doesn't matter. This was the mistake that Israel did in the wilderness, which is our example. In Hebrews, the 8th chapter, and the 8th verse, finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I'll put my laws in their mind. I'll write them in their hearts. I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. This knowing God is speaking of the union of God and man and the life of God and man. In the shared image of God, of which God intended. And this inward knowing of God will always have an outward evidence. In 1 John 2 and 4, he said, if you say that you know me, God said, make sure we establish whose authority we're speaking. God said, if you say that you know me, and you don't keep my commandments, you're a liar. That's what God said. So this great capacity for you and I to know God comes from our ability to choose God. The greatest ability to know God comes from your ability to choose God. Nothing else has got a choice. Nothing else was created with a void that allowed a choice. Except you. Now, if it tells me that my greatest ability is to choose, it tells what, what fills this void. It tells me that there are options. There is something else that I can choose. And that's something else that I choose to, this morning. And that, that other option, it's not devil, it's not hell. It's self. 
The other option that you and I have open to us is to fill the void is self. Now understand something. Man is created as a void. This man is created in the beginning as a void and that void is reflective of what fills it. Good and evil are not of man. Good and evil originate outside of man. They only are reflective in, in, in that which man decides to fill the void. Man likes to think that he's the captain of his soul. I don't choose God. I choose me. I am the captain of my soul. But the truth is, man is that void. And man is reigned over and ruled by what he chooses to fill that void. In Romans 5.21 As sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Something reigns in you this morning. And it's either life or death. And it's all dependent upon what we decide will fill the void. The Spirit of God and the Spirit of the world contend for possession of your being today. And they both make their appeal through the same faculties. Through your intellect and your emotion in seeking you and possession of you through your will. This is exactly what happened in Genesis. The two trees represent the appeal to the two minds. Those minds is your mind and God's mind. Look with me at 1 Corinthians 2, 14. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Here are the two minds. And it, the choice that is made is actually which of these minds are we going to allow to do the choosing. Now the mind that we allow to do the choosing becomes the dominant mind. And the dominant mind will take, uh, here's what will happen and does happen. If you and I choose the natural man. It's not a matter of saying, I choose, I choose sin, I choose death, I choose hell. I choose. It's not a matter. No, the church is filled with people this morning that have chosen the natural man. And the moment that we choose the natural man, your intellect and your emotions will do all that is necessary to make that fit the picture and make you feel like I'm okay. But the dominant mind will present its own truth and evidence it in your life. That which I reap, that I will sow. When Adam was exiled from the garden for making the natural choice, this was ex this 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 ex how do you say ex ex uh, being exiled was of his mind. Because the natural, he chose to be natural, and the natural man does not receive the things of God. So he suddenly becomes blind to everything that's there, because the Spirit of the Lord has now, the Spirit of the Lord is now withdrawn, and he can't see anymore what's there. 
We will make these choices and do make these choices in the everyday situations that's presented to us as divine revelation comes to bring us deeper into God. It's not going to be a situation where God comes in an angel and says, Do you want to go to heaven? It's not going to come to you and say, uh, uh, Wouldn't you like to rob and plunder and kill? It's going to come to you in, in a subtle way that's going to cause you to choose self. And then self is going to hurry into place to make you feel satisfied with your choice. And it will cause us to obey God in most things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These situations will come because God, there's going to be two opinions coming from those two minds. God's opinion and your opinion on every situation. One of those minds that you choose is conformed to this world and, and, and cannot get out of its captivity. Cannot believe God. Cannot trust God. Cannot receive because it cannot escape the, the captivity of the conformity to this world. The other mind will liberate you and transform you from this world. But it will come in choices that doesn't even look like this transformation. It will come in choices that will say, that, that, that will deal with things of, uh, like, do you, do you think you should go to church today? But when I choose the mind of Christ, it opens up and begins to liberate and transform me. When I choose the natural mind, it draws me and conforms me and blinds me to God. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, continuing, Beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. This transformation of the mind is the difference in our captivity and our liberation. It is in the mind. And let me tell you something this morning. And I want this to encourage you and to uplift you. Because I want you to see by what I'm saying what God intends for you. You absolutely cannot occupy the place that God created for you. Within the realm of this mind. You absolutely cannot accomplish the purpose of God for which you are sent within the realm of this mind. True obedience is impossible within yourself. Because that which God is going to ask of you is beyond your life. It's beyond you. He created you to take you beyond yourself. He has called upon your life to do what you cannot do. Oh, but if you and I will, will submit to that mind, God will take us where we could not go. And that's the purpose. That's Him filling that void. And the calling of God upon your life. True obedience is beyond this realm. True faith is beyond this realm. Requires a faith beyond it. Requires a power beyond it. And what it is, is it's actually when we begin to see the, the, the mind of God exercised through the faculties of man. By us submitting to God that which He has created. For that purpose. God speaks to you today. Telling you and I that my truth.
has not yet been entered. My truth has not yet been entered. It's the rest of Hebrews 4 that remaineth unto his children. Beyond you, beyond yourself. God's desire and design is that you enter, and it can only be done through the transforming of the mind. It says in John 16, 13, that when the Spirit of truth has come, He will lead you into all truth. He will lead you into all truth. I'm not there, but He that can take me there is here. Hallelujah. God speaks to me this morning and you. God doesn't dumb down to talk to you. God speaks to you in total truth. My pro uh, the total truth of His mind. My problem is that I hear with the limited comprehension of my mind. That is my problem. And the transformation of minds is the only way it can be fixed. Now, Second Peter 1 and 12, Peter said, I, Now I know that you are established in your present truth. My present truth dictates my present faith. Romans 1.16 tells us that, that, that I, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of, of, of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first uh, and, and then to the Gentile, moving us from faith to faith. I'm moved from faith to faith by truth. And God comes to lead me into all truth. It's His journey. It's His responsibility. It's not my struggle. If I'm struggling to have faith, it's my faith I'm dealing with. And that's no good. How many times does it have to fail me before I understand that? Present truth equals present faith. And vice versa. You cannot have more faith than you have truth. I don't care how much you try to, to, uh, to persuade. No matter how much positive thinking, no matter what you do, you will never have more faith than you have truth, and you can never have more truth than you have faith. They are linked together and completely inseparable. Faith apart from truth is your faith. God comes by the Spirit of truth, reveals truth, and we move from faith to faith. Here's what truth is. Truth is the indwelled Spirit of God. Truth is the Spirit of God, but your truth is the indwelled Spirit of God. Now here's what your faith is. True faith. True faith is the indwelled Spirit of God believing. Every struggle is because we get outside that truth and that faith and try to do it ourselves. It's not hard for God to believe. But it's impossible for you to. All unbelief is a product of the natural. All belief is a product of the spiritual. So truth is God in me. And faith is God in me believing. Galatians 2.20 speaks of this in saying, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It's His life 
and His faith in me. That's God filling the void for the intent of His purpose in your life. Truth and faith is the person and the action of God in the believer. Where my present truth and my present faith are is not the ratio of how much God is filling that void. When I struggle to believe, when I battle in, in, in where I am, it's not a matter of my needing to have more faith. It's not a struggle to be persuaded. It's, it's not, this, this is not a need of, of someone bringing me greater information. It is a matter of repentance because unbelief is not of God. It's a matter of submission because self will never believe God. It is a matter of repentance and submission. And through this progression will come a transformation of the mind. And as that mind is transferred, transformed, it will determine your truth. And it will determine your faith. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. And the tenth verse. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God know, knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, and we might know that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. It's not a matter of education. It's not your mind, it's God's mind working through your mind. It's not a matter of your heart, it's God's heart working through your heart. That's what he meant when he said, here's the new covenant. I'll put my mind in you. I'll put my heart in you. And then you'll know God. then that void will be filled with that which has the capacity. And then we will see. Hallelujah. Oh, what I want you to understand this morning. What I want, God wants me to understand this morning. Here's your struggle. Fill me, God. Just show me what resist, show me what's resisting you. And every time a situation comes of two opinions, help me to realize nothing in this walk is insignificant. And that little thing that I've deemed insignificant is what's blinding me and causing my struggle. If I will repent and submit. The spirit of truth has come and is in me to bring me into all truth. Now tell me, who can stop him? All I have to do is follow. And God said, everything is already established in heaven. It's already written in heaven. And we shall see 